Okay, this is Yusuf. Um, I just, uh, <laughs> well, you guys know. I, I I don't know why I always keep saying that. Um, this is Yusuf at my channel. And uh, these are just some of the questions that I have been asked. And again, I didn't realize how in-depth or how many paragraphs were in the, um, the PMs that I was sent, but quite a long ones. But I think I can address these two. Um, not fully, but give the answer that I, I think that, or not give an answer, but um, give an answer, but not, not, not so expansive, but pretty clear. Um, and oh, there was a, there was another one that I wanted to Um, I, I think I'll just have to stick with addressing these two. Um, uh, this comes from, uh, somebody who I've, um, talk, uh, messaged on here with a lot, and, um, this, this is a kind of personal question. He said, uh, would you please make a video about the soul in relation to the body? Alzheimer's disease is a very prevalent in my family, and I probably will develop it myself one day and it has been a great stumbling block in my faith how a person slowly loses personality until not a shadow not even a shadow of a shadow of the self remains what happens to the soul when the brain is broken question mark is is it trapped question mark is it freed question mark is it all captive? I have heard various ideas in this regard and found our Vladika Lazar's neurobiology, neurobiology of sin very fascinating, but yet uh, I, I yet to find a satisfactory answer. And I was wondering if you could give an orthodox answer to my question or your opinion if you don't have the time uh, to make a bid. I, okay, I'm making the bid for it. Um, uh, again, I was going to saying the soul in the Old Testament um, is the body with the pneuma or the body with the spirit or the body with the divine spark or, or, or the animated body. And uh, in some cases, especially in Genesis, this is all living souls, meaning um, any, any body with the life force in it. Um, but if we're speaking about soul in the Western sense, we mean the uh, immaterial part of the body that uh, motivates the body that um, is in orthodoxy, it's integral to the body, it affects the body, and the body affects the soul in, in our actions of what we do. And um, again, this is what leads me to say that we are created in the image and likeness of God, and you wouldn't destroy a body because it still, to some degree, retains that because of the effect that the soul has, or the effect that the spiritual world has on the body that 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 was still a um, a capsule of uh, of a of a person that is part of a person and that it's it, it would take me longer to go into but um with Alzheimer's I uh, I feel a great deal of pain for uh, those people who suffer. When it, I mean, just thinking about it, it it's a horrible thing. And um, a lot of times they get very angry because they don't know where they are, they don't know who they are. Um, sometimes with amnesia, that the personality changes quite 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 quickly. Uh, I can't say that the the soul is trapped or it's gone. I think the expression of the person, um, meaning their true self or the soul or whatever you want to call it, is distorted because um, the brain as a receiver for the soul, Some that's the best kind of way I can think of uh, or um, you used to describe it as all scrambled up. And it's a terrible thing. Um, so I would... It's a stumbling block in faith. Yeah, I, because uh, I would imagine because of the great suffering that comes along with that. And well, why would 
why would that need to be or you know whatever um these people do have souls just maybe loss of personality and a shell of a shell of a person or the shadow of a shadow over the shadow of a person as you say um yeah it's it's horrible but again uh we need to take care of these people even if they don't remember who we are and i i could not imagine anything more painful if um, if my grandmother in her later years couldn't remember me, it was shocking to see her being skin and bones, weighing like 55 pounds, but she knew me, um, she knew who I was, uh, I, 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 I don't know what I'd do if I knew a family member who, who was like this, um, it's gotta be extremely rough, um, but the soul and the body, do have a connection with each other. It's not docetism, uh, and as not as for not finding a satisfactory answer, I think that kind of ties in with suffering. And I, I don't know if you're going to get a satisfactory answer. And even if you do, even if you get the absolute technical details of all this kind of stuff, um, would that lessen any of the pain that you've gone through, or would you not care as much for a world who's going through this and um, it's very unrewarding to do something like this and for a person who might get angry at you, might forget who you are, might say terrible things to you because I've had little experience with Alzheimer's patients, uh, none that were close to me, none that were of blood relation or you know anything like that. So my heart goes out to you. Um, and uh, the second question I wanted to get to, and I know that's very brief, please forgive me being brief, I have to, I have to run, I, I hate, I wish I could just sit down and do all of these, um, and uh, our friend George from Georgia writes <coughs> that it's very upsetting to him that there are priests in Georgia uh, Orthodox priests. So I believe Georgia is under um, is under the Oriental Orthodox Communion. Although, obviously, there are going to be churches in the that are Eastern Orthodox. I don't know which one he is. Um, I don't care. He's my brother in Orthodoxy. I'm not going to split hairs on that one. Um, although I know many Eastern Orthodox people will take issue with me. And if I'm wrong, if Georgian Orthodox is not Oriental, if it's not in communion with the Armenians, if it's in full communion with the Russians, the Antiochians, and the Greeks, then fine. Um, and uh, <laughs> this is actually a problem in Russia and, and some of the Greeks, and then even in America too, uh, this being uh, infected into different parishes of um, these priests or uh, Orthodox teachers pushing Seventh-day creationism and bashing evolution. He said, you can't imagine my pain when I saw this great uh, science downgraded to the level of Ray Comfort street performances. I mean, giving lectures on theology and having no idea who Alexander Mann or uh, Sergei uh, uh, Bulgakov are is like being a physicist who has never heard of Isaac Newton. Um, he says, uh, uh, good day, Yusuf. How, uh, I haven't seen you in a long time yet. Please forgive me about that. How are things? You know, just, um, when, when confronted by a creationist Orthodox priest, please let me get into the details. University I studied, established um, where I studied was established by the Patriarch of Georgia, and so there is an additional course, well, theology. Yeah, right. Theology first was very thrilled. I was very thrilled by the opportunity, for I thought we would be studying Orthodoxy and the history as well as at least some extent, but imagine my disappointment when the lecture appeared to be creationist. Oh, the horror and misery. Another additional detail, my father is the head of the university, 
And as you understand, slacking off is not an option, especially because he is friends with my father, so what should I do? I mean, I watch several lectures about the theology online, and I have at least a little understanding of what kind of discipline it is. Georgian, in Georgian, the word corresponding science comes from a word of understanding, everything else, logistics, natural sciences, philosophy, economics, theology, fall into that category. You can't imagine my pain when a great scientist downgraded, yeah. Um, I'm going to speak about spiritual things in which souls are attached to the bodies, whatever it's supposed to mean. I think atheists now, I think I understand atheists now, but their enemy should be lack of understanding, which is also general display of regards to religion. All mindless people with brains, slumbering tranquility. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, is that um, where in orthodoxy does it teach creationism? And you point out in here that there's early Christians that have challenged the idea of this 6,000-year-old universe or 6,000-year-old world or 10,000-year-old world, and that it's actually not orthodox. These are just the views of, of uh, I mean, it, it's really quite comical. Um, you say you like the science behind Richard Dawkins' books, but you think his philosophy is disgusting. Um, you say you secretly enjoy the irony. Um, yeah, I think this is a point, and this is, this is the charge of all Orthodox people, even if it's a bishop, a patriarch, a priest. Um, where in the, first of all, the, the view of the Bible of taking it super literally is not Orthodox. Where in the ecumenical councils does it discuss anything like this? Where in church history has this been discussed in, um, where is it in the hymns? Because as we know, what the Orthodox Church believes is contained in the hymns and in, in the councils. So this creationism is a fraud. Uh, you get into Orthodox theology, um, the first two things you should be studying are the hypostatic union and the trinity, and that's it. I mean, you got to get those two things down before you get anything else down. Um, so, I, I, I think there's a great, I mean, if your father's a, um, an intelligent, open man and open-minded, you can, I mean, say, look, I, I need to confront this person on this. And uh, it's your duty as an Orthodox Christian because this man has stepped into heresy which means he's either excommunicated himself or put himself into heresy or put himself into anathema. So you've got a great opportunity there because obviously you're not the only person in the class and this could very well turn many people away from orthodoxy saying, oh, it's creationist. I mean, these, this can create another one of those Zogmites Chris people, Christina Rad or whatever her name is. <coughs> no, we are not creationist. Emphatically, no. And this creation idea is Dia was not in historical orthodoxy. It had only come in post-Soviet. Post-Soviet rule is when this came in. Um, and it's funny, there's some of these orthodox over in the Eastern Bloc countries that have, uh, or post-Soviet countries that use Jack Chick tracks. Um, so I think you have a great opportunity in front of you, although I'm not going to say, well, this is your cruci this is what you should do, and this and that, and, you know, put your, your education online. I know you love physics. You've talked to me about that all the time. You're pretty much like a nerd for it. Um, but it also can be a great opportunity because uh, I think you should challenge him on this, and that theology has nothing to do with seven-day creation. That's not theology at all. That's hyper-literalism, and it... it, it it's nowhere in the realm of orthodoxy, in that you can point out that the ancients didn't even, the ancient Christians didn't hold this view, and that you start off with theology, you start off anything with theology talking about the hypostatic union and um, the Trinity, because without those, um, the Gospels are basically, it's useless. So um, I thank you for that, um, both of you guys. I hope this video is satisfactory for you. Um, peace to you. May God save Serbia. And if you have any more questions, please message them to me. This has been Yusuf.